Well, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. We're really excited that you're joining us for what should be a really engaging conversation. With me this afternoon, I have Jennifer Somm, Director of MSLs with Castle Biosciences. Welcome. Thanks Thank for you. joining us. So let's start by talking about the Decision DX melanoma test. I'm curious, how are you seeing the Decision DX melanoma test influence treatment decisions? Yeah, so our test is a test that examines the RNA expression of genes in the biopsy tissue. And it can answer two main questions that clinicians have when they're looking at a patient with melanoma. One question is how likely is this patient to have a positive sentinel lymph node biopsy if they choose to have that surgery? And then a second key question is how likely is this patient's cancer to come back or recur? And so the test looks at the RNA of the melanoma, the tissue of it, to see how aggressive is this disease. And we give personal results for the patient based on the gene expression, as well as clinical features of the melanoma, such as Breslow depth or ulceration. So let's talk about some of the new key data surrounding the Decision DX melanoma test. What's the latest and greatest? Fill me in. Yeah, we have a great collaboration with the National Cancer Institute, and we were able to look at the results of the patients who had the Decision DX melanoma test in the SEER database. The SEER database is a population-based registry that covers 48% of the United States population. Now, in this database, we were able to identify 5,000 patients who had the Decision DX melanoma test. And what we found is that patients who had the low-risk molecular testing results had much better melanoma-specific survival and overall survival than patients who had high-risk results. Then we had a second part of the study where the National Cancer Institute helped us match patients who had Decision DX melanoma testing to patients who didn't. And we were able to show that patients who had the testing had better survival, both melanoma-specific survival and overall survival. And we look forward to continue this collaboration with the National Cancer Institute. What an impact for our melanoma patients to be able to get that information out there and provide such valuable insight. You know, shifting from melanoma, let's talk about squamous cell carcinoma. Mm -hmm. The incidence is rising. You know, tell me about where the test for squamous cell carcinoma comes in that Castle Biosciences has. Yeah, as you said, the, the incidence of squamous cell carcinoma is rising and we expect to have 2 million patients identified with cutaneous squamous cell. And of those 2 million patients, we estimate 200,000 of them will be high risk, right? Maybe they have a tumor with a large diameter or their tumors locate on the head and neck or it's deep or is poorly differentiated. And it's important for clinicians to be able to risk stratify those patients and understand how to match treatment decisions with the patient's risk. So the Decision DX squamous cell carcinoma test is a test for patients for, who have high risk squamous cell carcinoma to help further refine their risk. And again, it is a gene expression profile. We're looking at 40 genes in this case, again, on the biopsy tissue. We have found that clinicians are willing to adjust their treatment recommendations based on the test results. And they might decide whether to follow up patients more often, whether or not they would need imaging, especially nodal imaging. And then they might decide whether or not this patient is a good candidate for radi radiation. And again, in some patients, they might use the test, test results to downgrade the intensity of follow-up treatment, or in other cases, they might choose to increase the amount of follow-up for a given patient. The more information, the better. Certainly very valuable. Yeah. Well, Jennifer, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Jennifer with Castle Bioscience is joining us today to talk about the latest and greatest in melanoma and squamous cell carcinoma. So thank you so much. Thank you, it was a pleasure to be here.